What do y'all believe the fear of the Lord is? Didn't God just talk about those who tremble at his word? I believe that's the beginning. I don't believe man is going to give the time and attention necessary to learn that book until that fear of the Lord is real. You say, but I'm not going, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. Paul's talking about the spirit of the fear of this world. He told you to work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. Didn't he? Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade who? Men. I tell you what people in America need and what Christians in the world need today they need to get off Facebook trying to win debates and fear God and read His Word. Yes. Amen. It's the beginning. But here, fools despise wisdom and instruction. You know who don't fear God? Fools. Mm-hmm. Yep. Amen. Now, now look at what Solomon says there in 1 2. You know why those Proverbs were written? They were written to know wisdom and instruction. Do you know, you know one of the first things you're going to have to do in this study process? Number one, you're going to have to have a fear of the Lord. That's the beginning. Number two, you're going to have to know. That means you're going to have to become acquainted with the book. To know wisdom and instruction, Solomon wrote these things for somebody to know something. Not necessarily to understand it. That comes later. You have to become acquainted with the book. I should, you know, if I say Habakkuk, you should know where it's at. If I say Zephaniah, you should know where it's at. Nahum. You should not only know where they're at, you should, listen, you should know what kings they prophesied during. Okay. Oh, I don't know, preacher. That book ain't important enough to you. You think I got a problem with it? Amos prophesied in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, Jeroboam, king of Israel, two years before the earthquake. Listen, man, that book ought to be important to you. You ought to be familiar with it. You ought to know what's in it, its contents at least. The more I become familiar with that book, Bill, I start seeing 22 books here, 22 books here. 5, 12, 5, 5, 12, and 5. I start seeing these beautiful structures, five books in the book of Psalms. But you don't find these things by not becoming familiar with the book. And in order to become familiar with it, you're going to have to spend some time with it while it's a stranger to you. Every person you've ever gotten to know in your life was because you spent time with somebody you didn't know. That book's no different. You're going to have to spend hours with it where it's like a stranger to you. Just keep reading. Just keep reading. Just keep reading. Then you know what's going to happen? Second step is you're going to perceive the words of understanding. As you become familiar with it and begin to know it, then you're going to begin to perceive it. You know the beautiful thing about perceiving that book? Is as you as your perception is developed, that perception is giving you the receiving of the instruction of wisdom, judgment, justice, and equity, and it's giving you something. It's giving subtlety to the simple. You know what subtlety is? It's skill. It's craft. Is that not what we're talking about as a skilled workman? But in order to become that skilled worker, you've got to go through a process of knowing, perceiving, receiving some things. 
Somebody gets saved today and they learn a Bible verse. Next thing you know, they're teaching Sunday school. None of this even matters anymore. Before you know it, you got 15 preachers. One of them saying you can lose your salvation. One of them saying you can't. One of them saying you got to be baptized to go to heaven. One of them saying you don't have to be, but you got to be baptized to join a church. Because you don't have people that take this serious anymore. The book of Proverbs, man. You know what Proverbs is? Look at Proverbs chapter 2. My son. See verse 1 there? Look back at chapter 1. Let's, let's start there. Look back at chapter 1 verse 8. My what? Look at verse 10. My, look at verse 15. My what? Look at verse 2 1. My what? 3 1. 3 11. 3 21. My what? Now the next time somebody tells you that this doctrine, Paul says, as many as are led of the Spirit, they are the sons of God. For you've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That book is speaking to you as a father speaks to a son. The writer of Hebrews tells those Jews in Hebrews chapter 12, you have forgotten the exhortation that speaketh unto you as unto children. And he quotes Proverbs, my son. Now listen, as a son, when you understand this, listen, you don't have to grow up to be a son of God. You're a son in Christ. But I'm going to tell you something. As a son, there's a spirit that's been given to you that is a spirit of adoption. When you read Paul's epistles, God is teaching you to have the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's what Paul calls the knowledge of the Son of who? God. You as a son have more responsibility to the Father than to go home and do that with that book. You know what that is? I don't care if you're saved or not. That's a fool. I've been a fool. There's still times that I'm a fool. But I know what, I know what, I'm going to read a couple of verses here. Proverbs chapter 2. We are sons. We are sons. And I don't care what anybody else has to say about this issue. Everybody wants to dodge it. All these people out there want to sidetrack it. Well, so this person over here don't believe you get the Spirit of God until you're a son. They just want to sidetrack the issue. Are you a son? Are you, is God your father? Does God want you to grow up into Jesus Christ in all things? You know what it's going to take for you to do that? Was Jesus Christ the Son of God? You know where he was at at 12 years old? He was in the temple hearing and asking questions. His mother and father said, what are you doing? We were looking for you. He said, wist was you looking for me? You should have known, in other words, you should have known where I was at. Did you really not know I must be about my father's business? 
That's a 12-year-old boy where he's supposed to be learning the mind of the Father as God's son. Now, we either take that stuff serious or we don't, man. But this gets into the very right division. It's not so that you can win an argument on Facebook. It's not so that you can go tell a bunch of Baptists that they're stupid. It's not so that you can go on Facebook like a fool and tell a bunch of people, you're not born again. Because you want to flaunt something you think you've learned. Right division, right division is a skill developed over years of studying the Word of God the way it should be studied with the right motive. 